Let us pray. Today is the Sunday within the office of the Feast of the Holy Cross. We continue to celebrate the Holy Cross. We thank God for the cross of the Son of Jesus Christ. For in thy cross we find love and hope, forgiveness, mercy, and grace. So as we walk in the service today, on this Sunday, we thank God for the parish, the priests, Ah, and his name. Give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. Can you join him on a hill far away, page 14 of the
service by following the screen. Page 101 from the prayer book. Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secret side. Plant the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you rights, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God and Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world and our mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, we see our prayer. For you alone are the Holy God. You alone are Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. Mercifully granted me new glory and the mystery of our redemption. May have grace to take up our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. We sit now for the ministry of the word, and you can follow the scriptures on the screen or in your book. Remember since mercy and faithfulness to love 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, the 12th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Glory to Christ, Savior. Jesus said, Now the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd asked him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, Believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. The God of God. Praise the Christ. Oh. 
Now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The words from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and verse 32. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. My friends, this week, culminating today, we are celebrating our Feast of Title, the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, a feast set apart by the early church to focus on the triumph and victory on what has become one of the main symbols of the church and of our faith. We need only look around us in church, in homes, in schools, even around many of our necks, to see the high esteem with which many people, the world over, hold the cross. But this was not always the case. There was a time, as you very well know, that the cross stood for shame, defeat, and a loss of hope and dreams. Few who followed Jesus at, the, at that time truly understood why he was even going to the cross. And many of them completely lost it after the cross. But Jesus' words still held true. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. My friends, in this day and time in which we live, 
when the world seems just so crazy and upside down. And nothing is normal anymore, or the way it used to be. Perhaps it's a good time to reacquaint ourselves with the meaning and the purpose of the cross. And what it has done, and what it continues to do and will do for our lives in this unusual time in which we live. And so the first place I want to start is that the cross teaches us about obedience and trust. Jesus, I'm sure, in his last hours before the cross would have gladly picked another option than dying on a cross. But his trust and obedience to God his Father was far greater than his personal feelings and wishes. He knew the task at hand. He knew his Father's plan to defeat the power of evil and replace it with the power of love. He knew he had to go to the cross and take our sins, my sins, your sins, our evil thoughts and ways, our jealousies, our pettiness. He knew he had to take it all down to the pit of hell and then raise up as a new person, a new creation, clean and pure and holy. That was God's plan for us back then, and it's still God's plan today. That every time we slip and fall, and we fall into sin, and we fall into bad ways, that once we can trust and obey God our Father, we too can rise up as a new creation, better than before. As the hymn writer says, trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. The second message from the cross is one of hope. As the slogan says, keep hope alive. Jesus believed in the mission. He trusted the plan. That dying the worst way possible. And defeating the evil, the evil and atrocities of the world would give people hope. Hope for all the nations. Hope for all people of all races, classes, and backgrounds. Hope that there is another way. That there can be a better tomorrow. There can be a brighter future. Sadly though, it has not yet been realized. There's still more battles to fight and to win more. There's still more evil powers to defeat, some right in our midst. So we must always never give up hope. We must keep hope alive, for the cross will always stand for hope. Hope that we can do better. Hope that we can achieve more. Hope in knowing that God has the last say. There is a story, my brothers and sisters, from back in the days of slavery in America, when a then slave could not take it anymore, and he fled one night with his wife and his young son through the darkness. And though he was hunted down by dogs and slave owners, he kept going and going over hills and valleys and rivers and streams. But one night, though, tired and hungry, worn out, his family ready to give in and give up, he looked up and he saw a cross on top of a building. And he went toward and it turned out to be a Christian mission place where they fed and clothed and gave hot help for runaway slaves. And guess what? It was run by a white pastor who was a gay slave. The cross on top of that building gave this runaway slave family hope. What could have been a hopeless 
situation. The cross gives us hope that tomorrow will be better. The third and final lesson of the cross I want to share with you today, my friends, is that the cross is all about love. The love of God shown through and embodied in His grace and mercy. St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 that God proved his love for us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. You know what that means in modern day English? It means that in spite of the fact that we were evil, in spite of the fact that we are unloving or unforgiving, in spite of the fact that sometimes we are selfish, and sometimes we got bad days. And I could go on with that list of all of us. But in spite of this, he loved us so much that he thought we were worth saving. So he died for our sin. What a savior. He thought we were worth saving. This thought as I wrote the sermon last night, Friday night, sorry, came home to me in a very clear way recently. When the deacon and I were visiting Marjorie Cullen's home after her husband's passing. And as we got on the road, a young man was driving a car and he stopped and he saw me. And he had in his car a very pregnant wife. At first, I didn't recognize who it was until he took off his mask. Thank God he was wearing a mask. And then I finally realized that it was a student of mine, a former student of mine from SJC. And he introduced me to his wife and his expectant child. He even had a name of the child already. The boy. That experience on that Saturday evening made me tremble. It made me get goosebumps. And I really wanted to cry. But I couldn't cry because the deacon was on the side of me. That this young man, who for years at SJC was what we would have called a problem student, he ducked class whenever he could. He did not like school. He was always in the office waiting to see the principal. My name is quite bright. But when I took him under my wing as a guidance officer, I asked him, what is the most thing he would like to do in school? And he said, play basketball. So I got him on the junior boys basketball team. And when he met on that team, his wings spread. And he flew like me. And I remember vividly, it always came back to me last Saturday night. I remember vividly the night that we won the independent school's basketball championships. And we won it with this mini show. And after the game, as I was going in my car, I heard someone say, Father, Father, hold up, man. And when I turned around, it was him. And he ran into my arms. And he hugged me and cried like a baby. The tears were streaming down his boy's face. And thank you for never giving up on him. That was a humbling experience then. Imagine how it was for me 20 odd, 30 years later. It was God's love and grace and mercy that saved that woman. And now he is driving a better car than me, Alexis. He has a beautiful wife in the front seat. I mean, she's pretty pretty. And a child on the way. Look at God. Look at God. Never gives up on us, even when we're ready to give up on ourselves. Amen? And so, my beloved, we are here today in church, loving and caring each other, and being there for others because of the cross. There is no other reason, my friends. We are here because of the cross. Full stop. Period. Show done. The cross saved us. The cross continues to save us every single day. 
in storms and by times in a pandemic, in the midst of illness, in the midst of death and destruction, the cross still stands. The cross saved us then and the cross will save us today. And so as we move forward as a church, in this unusual time in which we live, unusual all over the world, let us not forget the meaning of the cross. The cross is one of love and hope and trust and faith and grace. We must never forget God's plan for us. We will never forget as long as we don't give up hope. As long as we remember his love, his grace, and his mercy. As the song says, and we sing sometimes, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too for your grace and mercy. Bringing me to me. Amen. God bless us today as we celebrate another holy cross. Amen. We now stand to continue our service with our intercession. As we pray for the church, we pray to God on our faith.
Thanks for allowing me to come up. Thank God, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Wall. During the office, sorry, remember to put the offering in the box on the front of the box in the back. The offering can be found on page 15 of your bulletin or on the screen. At the cross, at the cross.
maybe Sydney problem, some sort of Marjorie problem, to the family of the ladies of Gloria Smith, past the ladies. We also offer this Eucharist to all those on the front line of the fight for this pandemic. Our doctors and nurses and other hospital workers, those in the task force, our police and defense force officers, and all those fighting for the common good of us all. Thank God for their work. We say together the prayer of the offering, Father, we offer you these gifts that you have given us. The spread of this mind is mine. Then we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work. We come for your own prayer, a reasonable holy life and sacrifice. As the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ, so may we in all your people become channels of water to the same Christ's soul. And more importantly, we remember especially those who have died from this, this, this uh, pandemic, this virus. Pray for those who are still battling. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and every way to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you. Joining our voices of angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Prayer in page 142. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being in your great love to fasten us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share my human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for me. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after stopping, he took the cup of wine and many given signs. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, and we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on each gift of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of you and an ending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as the royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Baptist, and all your sons and daughters who share your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before your earth and heaven in the song of everlasting praise. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, as well as be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give we break this bread and share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God to the people of God. Our souls of peace and sacrifice. 
the truth ministers, and the truth dancers will now minister to us.
we all find Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and gave us in this day and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Now we already passed our allotted time, but if I don't let the choir sing now, I'll, I'll get run out of the door. Even though they told me they weren't singing, but that just to stop. But nevertheless, I will let them sing now. And if anyone gets locked up, I may send them to I am Choir announcement. Be ready to get locked up. <laughs> it's good to see the choir back on road, some of them up there. That's a wonderful achievement from March. And we get a lot of Thank you. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and other forms of celebration. Father, continue to watch over them, keep them safe, keep them from harm and danger. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you all very much for a beautiful speech to say. A recession of him in the 134, the omit verses 3, 4, and 5. 134. <laughs>